So now we are going to read about the staining techniques and different stains. So there are three types of stains. Those are called as simple stain, the differential stain and the impregnation stain or the impregnation technique. Okay, so simple stain is done with the methylene blue dye. Okay, and the differential stain examples are the Albert stain, the Gram stain and the acid fast stain out of which we will read the Gram stain and the acid fast stain extensively. Okay, and why they are called as differential stain? So they are called as differential stain because they are helpful in differentiating between different organisms, different bacteria like the gram stain can differentiate between two group of bacteria that is the gram positive bacteria and the gram negative bacteria. Similarly, the acid fast stain can differentiate between the acid fast organisms and the non acid fast organisms or the bacteria. Okay, and the impregnation stain or technique is for especially for the thin bacteria because thin bacteria cannot be seen under the light microscope directly so we have to make them thick by impregnating silver salts over their skin or over their surface so as we do the impregnation of the silver salts over their surface they become thick and become visible by the microscope so this is called as the impregnation stain or the impregnation technique okay so we will read the gram stain extensively so starting with the gram stain in the gram stain there are four steps of the gram stain rather we use the four reagents for the gram stain so those four stains sequentially are the primary stain the mordant the decolorization and the counter stain so you can remember it with the mnemonic of pmdc okay the pmdc so pmdc is the primary stain is for the staining of the organism and that staining of the organism is done by the crystal violet, methylene, methyl violet or the gentian violet. Normally in our college in the NRS MCH we had the crystal violet or the gentian violet in our lab. Okay, so we used these two stains or any one of these stain to uh, do the primary staining of the organism. Then comes the mordant so mordant the basic function of the mordant is to fix the primary stain with the cell wall of the bacteria and the mordant universally we use the grams iodine as a mordant so grams iodine helps in fixing the primary stain to the cell wall of the bacteria next comes the decolorization so decolorization is done with the acetone or alcohol or a mixture of acetone plus alcohol okay so these things are used for decolorization and in decolorization we decolorize the background and also the bacteria if it is a gram negative bacteria we'll see why the gram negative bacteria gets decolorized but not the gram positive bacteria when we see the principle of the gram staining okay so till now you just remember that in decolorization there is decolorization of the background plus there is decolorization uh, of the bacteria if it is a gram negative bacteria then comes the next step that is the counter stain so counter stain is done with the saffronine or the carbal fusin okay so uh, the basic function of the carb counter stain is that it is stains the background and also the organism if it is gram negative organism okay so these are the four reagents that we use in the grams staining that is the PMDC that is primary stain mordant decolorization and the counter stain okay and you should remember the examples of the reagents what we use for primary stain and what we use for the as a mordant and what we use as a decolorizer and what we use as a counter stain because these may be asked in your vivas and these are very important in the practical part of the microbiology because if you couldn't answer these questions then it's very likely that you may fail also in the practical microbiology exams okay so having said that let's start the procedure of the gram staining so in the uh, procedure of the gram staining first of all we make a smear so how do we make a smear so first of all we take a glass slide and we clean the glass side and make it grease free by heating it over the flames okay on both the sides 
like in our college in nls mcl we used to take the glass slide and heat it on both the sides so that it becomes grease free and then we used to uh, you know wipe it with a with a cotton cloth okay and thereby we used to make it a clean glass slide and then we used to take uh, inoculating loop inoculating loop if you have uh, uh, gone to your microbiology lab you must have seen the inoculation loop there is a handle and then over that there is a loop like this okay so this is called as the inoculation loop this is handle and uh, this is wiring i mean this is a wire like thing which is uh, round at the end and this is called as inoculation loop so we then we take a inoculation loop inoculating loop and then we make it red hot this is a method of sterilization okay so red hot how do we make it a uh, make it red hot so in our college we had a uh, we had you know uh, at each rack we used to have the lamps uh, there and uh, with the lamps there is flames and at the flames suppose this is the flame at the lamp so we used to keep the keep this uh, this uh, inoculating loop vertically 90 degree over that uh, over that flame until and unless this inoculating loop okay until and unless this inoculating loop becomes uh, red so as it becomes red that is called as the red hot technique of sterilization of the inoculating loop so you have to keep it vertically at uh, 90 degree over that flame of the lamp okay then we uh, we used to dip this inoculating loop in normal saline and uh, uh, take one to two drops of the normal saline on the slide after taking that we used to take the specimen from the culture media so we are provided with culture media suppose this is the culture media and over that culture media we used to have the confluent colonies like this we used to have confluent colonies and some of the discrete colonies also used to be there okay some of the discrete colonies like this okay this single colonies single discrete colonies used to be there like this okay so you we used to take this single discrete colonies by that inoculating loop okay you need not to uh, uh, you know isko nahi chhedna hai okay this this confluent colonies ke sath koi chhedkhani nahi karni hai you should take this uh, discrete colonies okay so so this discrete uh, single discrete colonies uh, used uh, we used to take this single discrete colonies and we add it over that normal saline we have taken already over that glass slide and then we mix it by concentric movement with the inoculating loop and then we spread it okay spread it over the glass slide to make a smear so suppose this we have made a smear over the glass slide next let's see the next step so next what we have is the fixation of that uh, smear over that glass slide so for the fixation we have to do the air dry so we used to keep the uh, uh, slide uh, open in air and uh, we used to uh, wait until and un- until and unless it becomes fully dried okay you should not uh, keep e- it under the uh, fan ceiling fan okay because uh, that is uh, prohibited that is uh, you know the our uh, fa- teachers used to scold us for uh, doing that so you should not do that you should just keep it over the rack and it will get uh, dried on its own by the air okay you should not go it Uh, to make it dry under the ceiling fan okay so uh, then it is uh, by that air dried method it is dried and uh, then by passing this light above the once it gets dried over the uh, by air dry when it become air dry then you have to pass it uh, over that flame three times okay with the smear side up we used to pass this over the flame side and then we do the primary stain that reagents we have read already so in the primary stain we used to take the gentian violet and we add it over the smear area okay and after adding we used to keep it for 1 minute there okay and then we used to wash it under the tap water this washing intermittent washing at each step after each step is very important okay washing is very important so we used to wash then uh, I, i mean after waiting for one minute we used to wash this uh, slide under the tap water and then we used to add the mordant so mordant we have is the grams iodine 
and uh, we also keep the grams iodine for one minute over that slide and after keeping there for one minute we used to wash it again under the tap water so again there is washing under the tap water and then comes this third step that is the decolorization so this decolorization is the most crucial step this is the most crucial step or the most important step of the grams staining okay you should remember this this decolorization is very important step okay so in the decolorization we used to use the acetone or the alcohol so if you we are using the acetone then we have to keep it for two seconds and if we are using the alcohol then we have to keep it for 20 seconds okay so depending on the material what you are using you have to decide the time after that we again wash it under the tap water okay and then we do the counter staining so counter staining uh, in our college in nls mcs there was saffron in we used to keep the i mean uh, at each rack there was saffron in so we used to put this saffron in over that uh, slide and we used to keep it for one minute okay and then after uh, waiting for one minute then the saffron in is thrown off and smear is washed again and then the stained smear is air dried and after air dry of that specimen we put a cedar wood oil in the center of that specimen cedar wood oil this is very important step again to see it under the 100x micro uh, 100x lens okay so uh, if you are not putting this cedar wood oil uh, for 100x then you will not be able to see the microorganisms so this is a crucial and important step for seeing it under the 100x lens so after putting cedar wood oil then we examine it under the oil immersion objective lens okay so this is the whole procedure or the whole steps uh, all the steps of the grams staining now this there may be some variation in this timing okay there may be some confusion in this related to this timing like one minute one minute and then this saffron in for one minute okay this saffron in for one minute so in our college we used to do this like we um, used to put the uh, primary stain for one minute uh, jensen valid for one minute and then grams out in for one minute and then alcohol for 20 seconds and then saffron in for one minute okay this was the protocol in our college so i have made it uh, according to that only in various books you may find various time durations for this uh, for all these steps so uh, i'm not going to and in going into that you know discussion over that this is according to my college and i have put it uh, um, according to that okay so this is the this is all about the procedure or of the gram stain and then the interpretation so how do we interpret so interpretation is that the gram positive bacteria they resist decolorization so they appear violet okay while the gram negative bacteria they are pink so if you are seeing the violet bacteria then you can call it as a gram positive bacteria uh, in the microscope i mean gram positive bacteria and if you are seeing pink colored bacteria then you can say it a gram negative bacteria so based on the color we decide whether it is a gram positive or a gram negative bacteria now comes the picture here okay so this is for your pictorial memory of the gram is staining so see here we have made a smear here already so if you are not able to see this smear let's let me make you a smear for you so this is our smear here and we have put the crystal violet we have put the crystal violet here or the gentle violet here and we are keeping it for one minute and then after one minute we are washing it under the tap water see here we are washing it under the tap water after washing then we are adding the grams iodine we are adding the grams iodine it looks it looks slightly yellowish so uh, see here it is looking yellowish so uh, grams iodine is added and then it is also kept for one minute okay after keeping it for one minute this is one okay make it one so this is uh, uh, this is also kept for one minute and after keeping it for one minute then again it is also washed in tap water and after washing in tap water then we use the acetone or the absolute alcohol any one of them and uh, or the acetone alcohol mixture also can be added 
so uh, after adding those we immediately wash it under the tap water depending upon the time if you are using the acetone then 2 seconds and if you are using alcohol then 20 seconds if you are using a mixer of both of them then almost around 10 seconds will be enough for decolorization okay so after uh, adding this decolorizer then again you have to wash it under the tap water see here we are washing it under the tap water and after washing it under tap water then again we you you have to add the safranine safranine is red in color so see i have made it red also so safranine is added and then it is also washed for after one minute it is also washed after one minute and then after washing it uh, in tap water after one minute then it is air dried and after it becomes air dried then we add the cedar wood oil and then we see it under the oil immersion objective or the 100x lens and we identify whether it is a gram positive or a gram negative bacteria so this is the whole procedure or the steps of the grams staining gram staining that is very important if you are not knowing this gram staining then you may fail in your microbiology practical exam this is a very you know a very important topic to know and uh, you should uh, must know this topic for passing your second year microbiology practical exams so this is for the gram staining next we will see the uh, the principle behind this gram staining